Hey everyone, it's Dr. David here from El Paso Manual Physical Therapy. Welcome to our live stream this Monday afternoon. It's afternoon over here. It's four o'clock. Um, I don't know where you are in the world. It might be uh, middle of the night. might be, I have no idea. Let us know where you're from here. If you can hear me on the chat, uh, just let me know on the chat here that you can hear me and just say where you're from, what country, what state, what city, anything so that I can know that you can hear me. Um, today's video, what I'm going to be covering here, and of course, we're taking live questions on the chat here, uh, but today's video, I'm going to be talking about three important exercises you need to know right now for painful bone-on-bone -bone knee arthritis. And um, specifically, we're going to be answering the question that two people commented on, almost a, a virtually the same question. I'll, I'll read them both to you in a minute. Johnny G. Thing, thanks for letting me know you can hear me. <clears throat> um, but we, we're going to cover the concepts of three necessary exercises you if you have knee arthritis you have to be doing these three exercises and just to give you a little bit more context it's not about um, a specific exercise i'll tell you some specific exercises but it's more the 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 principle behind it the the method the way that you're exercising the way that you're moving which i'll get into the details here in a minute so if you've got knee osteoarthritis you're dealing with a, a bone on bone knee joint situation this is going to be for you. You want to listen in on this. Um, but let's get to the comments here. So we had our first comment from Josephine Malay. I have it I printed it out here. It's easier for me to see. She said, thank you, Dr. David. I have been diagnosed with bone on bone osteoarthritis, but due to COVID, invasive procedures such as my scheduled knee replacement was canceled. It's happened all over the world. I'm so sorry, Josephine. However, I'm thankful when you said that alternatives are available like knee exercises. If not much to ask, could you show us proper strengthening exercises for my knees so that I can improve with my mobility for as now I only depend with the help of my rollator. Looking forward to your, your kind reply. Thank you, Josephine Malay. Um, and for those of you that don't know what a rollator is, it's a walker, one of those things you use for balance. It's kind of like a rectangle shaped and you, you walk with it. And then the other comment we had was from Roxana Vergi from Toronto, um, uh, Ontario, so from Canada. And he said, Dr. David, you've been a blessing for me with your advice on cartilage repair and avoiding knee surgery. The OS, he means orthopedic surgeon, um, tells me I'm bone on bone and I need knee replacements and I'm trying to avoid this watching your videos with the appropriate exercises, but really worried about damaging my knees further. I'm 67 and regular with 10 minutes bicycle at home and Pilates three times a week and a bit of walking. Walking is painful after 15 minutes. What is right for me to do? Sorry to bug you about this. Ruk, Ruxana, you're not bugging me about this. This is exactly what I love to talk about and I'm happy to help you with it and everybody else who has knee arthritis that's willing to listen and put to put in place this advice. Um, so let's get to it. What exercises should you be doing? Now, I love Roxana's details specifically about he can't stand more than 15 minutes. Um, and then with Josephine, you know, she's using a walker, a rollator. So she's probably having trouble being on her feet for any long period of time. This tells me that you guys are probably very irritated in your knee joint, meaning Right now, you can't tolerate standing very long. You can't tolerate very many exercises either. And you've probably heard from every healthcare professional that you've ever seen. And you maybe have even Googled videos to help you for knee arthritis. And they all say to strengthen, right? You're hearing stuff like strengthen your quad muscles, strengthen your calf muscles, get stronger in your muscles. But the problem is when you go to strengthen those muscles, you kind of get worse, so you have to be very careful about which muscles you strengthen and when you strengthen. What I mean by that is if you're irritated right now, like you can't stand more than 15 minutes, like you said, Roxana, you have to be taking time off your feet. You have to be resting a bit so that you let that irritation come down and you don't need to be strengthening right now. You actually need to be resting and recovering. I'll tell you what you should be working on here in just a second. But I just want to put to rest the whole strengthening thing. You need to strengthen, but after you calm down your flare up. We have just a few comments here I'm going to um, uh, mention before we um, uh, keep going here. Steve Cuz, no Jesus, no peace. Absolutely. Amen. Tony 
McDonough, Donahue, I can hear. Great. Thanks, Tony. And KB Good, New York City, New York, USA. We're over here in Texas. Hello, New York City. Thank you so much for joining us, KB Good. All right. So let's talk about that first exercise. What the heck should you be doing right now? The number one thing that you need to be doing, the absolute priority as far as moving and exercising your knee joint for bone on bone knee arthritis, for uh, any kind of knee arthritis, uh, well, osteoarthritis is what I'm talking about. But before I get too far, not rheumatoid arthritis, not psoriatic arthritis, I'm talking about osteoarthritis, which is the most common arthritis that everybody deals with when it comes to knee problems, knee, knee related arthritis. Um, you need to do low resistance, high repetition exercise. That's kind of the strategy. Now, what fits into that category of low resistance, high repetition? Well, cycling is one of those, but how you do cycling matters. Think about it. Cycling is generally low resistance. Like you could, especially if you're on a stationary bike, you can push the buttons on there and bring the resistance down so that when you're pedaling, it's not that hard. You don't have much resistance. So low resistance compared to walking. It's usually very easy. It feels like nothing when you're just pedaling on the bike like that. And then you can do high repetitions, right? You can do, I mean, you don't really count reps on cycling. Usually you go for time, but it'll tell you reps per minute. So you can cycle at, you know, 20 reps per minute, 60 reps, reps per minute. You need to be getting close to a thousand reps per minute if we're talking about healing your cartilage. But here's the thing with low resistance, high repetition exercise. You need to avoid using your quadricep muscles too much. So when you're cycling, most people, they get recommended to jump on the bike by their orthopedic surgeon, by their physical therapist. You know, people dealing with knee arthritis, when they go see these healthcare professionals, they say, oh, jump on the bike, do the bike 30 minutes every day, seven days a week, or go, if you can go for an hour, go for it. And a lot of people go buy stationary bikes or they go buy bikes to ride outside, you know, outside the street or wherever they like to ride their bike. And that's great and all. But if you're using your quad muscles, what I mean by that is the front of your thigh. If you're using these muscles on the front of your thigh, as you're cycling, you feel these that are, are, are working a lot. They're burning. You finish getting off the bike and this is just stiff and tight because you worked it out. You're doing yourself harm in the long run. And the reason for that is because that muscle's probably already stiff and tight. And it is what has caused your knee arthritis. When that muscle gets stiff and tight on the front of the thigh right here, it connects to the, the uh, kneecap right here. And it starts to compress that kneecap down against the thigh bone, rubbing the cartilage behind it. Then on top of that, you have a tendon that attaches right here on the tip of the kneecap and it goes down to the, the shin bone. And so if that whole thigh muscle on the front is overworked, it's the main muscle that you're always using to exercise. It's the one that you feel tired consistently whenever you jump on the bike or any other exercise. It's going to tighten up that muscle, tighten up the this. And it's going to pull the shin bone up against the thigh bone and compress the cartilage and the meniscus in here, and it makes your knee arthritis worse. This is why oftentimes we hear people that say they go to the orthopedic surgeon and they don't really, they kind of get left hanging. They get left saying, or the, the, the surgeon tells them, um, well, I can give you pain medication. I can give you an injection. You can go try physical therapy, but you're probably going to need to come back in five to 10 years and we'll just replace that knee for you and you'll be done with it. And the reason why they say that is because that's what they see often. They don't, surgeons don't think about this stuff because they're not physical therapists. They're thinking in terms of what can they fix with their knives or scalpels and their tools. And they do a great job. I'm not throwing them under the bus whatsoever. If you need a knee replacement, which some of you out there probably should go get one, you need to get one. But if you have a chance at avoiding it, get on your bike, avoid using your quads. And what you need to think about using instead is the glute muscles. So when you go to push down on the pedal, let me tip this down a bit. When you go to push down on the pedal and you push away, you need to think about tightening up back here instead of right here. It takes some practice, but if you can think about squeezing, squeezing right here, squeezing right here, and you alternate sides. So when you push your right leg down and you tighten up that, that right butt muscle and then you, you spin the bike pedal around and then you push the left leg down and you need to think about tightening the left butt muscle and you just alternate. And it might feel very weird at the beginning, 
people that try this out for the first time, they're like, I have never ridden a bike like this ever in my life. And it feels awkward and weird, but then their knees feel fine on the bike and it actually begins to help. It decompresses the cartilage behind the knee and they feel fantastic. Now, bicycles aren't the only thing that you can use that's low resistance and high repetition. I see comments coming in. I'll get to you guys in just a minute. Um, so it's not just bicycles. You can also use an elliptical if you can tolerate being on your feet more. You can go walk. You can get on the treadmill. You can go outside and walk, but you got to walk the right way. Just like I'm telling you, you need to be using your glutes. We've talked about this at length on this channel. Um, we've got videos on that about how to walk properly so that you don't make your knees worse. You can do um, uh, the rowing machine is another one. We've talked about that as well. Rowing machines are fantastic, but you got to think glutes, not quads. In my opinion, one of the best places to start with a low resistance, high repetition exercise that doesn't require any major equipment. If you got a place to sit, that's all you need. A knee, knee swing, a tailgate swing exercise that looks like this is one that I've preached about that I think is fantastic. Super low resistance. This feels great on your knees. Do this for five to 10 minutes several times a day. Gosh, if you can do this every hour, if your knees are really flared up, your knees will love you for it. You're moving the fluid inside. You're getting that cartilage nourished and just bathed in the synovial fluid, the joint fluid that helps to heal it. This is gold for a flared up knee suffering from knee arthritis. So don't make it complicated. There isn't any magic bullet exercise for knee arthritis. It really is a process. It's about taking the right strategy towards knee arthritis and making sure that you progress it over time. So that is number one right there. Low resistance, high repetition exercise. We said the bicycle, you can use other things like an elliptical, a rower. You can go walking. You can use a treadmill. That tailgate swing I just showed you is another option as well. So I got two more things I'm going to talk about, but let's get to some comments here. All right, Johnny G thing. I have OS under my patella. He probably means OA, osteoarthritis. Which exercises do you recommend and is running okay? And I saw you had a comment earlier up here. I dislocated my knee at 15. Oh, geez, Johnny G thing. I'm sorry. I'm now 45 and have slight osteoarthritis under the patella, which I started to feel from mid thirties, it only hurt at a 45 degree angle with a load body weight. What exercises it is running okay? Okay, so you're asking um, what exercises should you do and is running okay? So this sounds like a very typical progression. A lot of people get what's called patellofemoral pain syndrome. It's also known as chondromalacia patella. They're kind of, they're, they're different, but they, they're kind of the same. They overlap a lot. There's a lot of conditions out there like this. Um, when you get, it's the same root problem, by the way. What I just mentioned about the quads being so tight and compressing the kneecap against the thigh bone, that's what sets up that patellofemoral um, pain syndrome. It can set up that dislocation like, like you had. Uh, I don't know if you got the dislocation, Johnny G thing, on, um, you know, on an accident or if it just happened without you even doing anything you are on your own maybe or just moving, exercising on your own. But if you have very strong quad muscles here on the front, it changes the way that the kneecap tracks on, on the uh, thigh bone. And if you don't have good glute exercise, glute, good glute strength to control your thigh bone, then it moves the thigh bone under the, the kneecap, which sets up that dislocation. And then if you're rubbing that cartilage back there constantly, then you can begin to wear down the cartilage. And as the years and decades go by, Johnny G thing, it got arthritis that begins to develop in that area. Um, so as far as exercises, um, you, you got to start working on the glutes, which is the next point I'm going to make. The glutes are critical muscles to get strong in, in everybody. I'll get into it more here in a second. But to answer the rest of your question, is running okay? It really depends, Johnny. Do you think it depends on how flared up you are right now and how good you're going to be at using your glutes when you run? And before you even get to running, you got to walk right with your glutes and have adequate strength to tolerate walking without flaring up your knee. So in other words, don't go start running if walking's already hurting you. If you can't tolerate walking for 20, 30 minutes without your knee bothering you more, your, your knee arthritis slash patellofemoral pain syndrome, chondromalacia patella, all hurting you, then don't go run because you're just gonna increase the impact of that kneecap on the thigh bone and you're gonna irritate your, your cartilage further, irritate your arthritis further, and it's just gonna, 
move you faster down the arthritis pathway. So if you do have good strength though in your glutes and you can use your glutes properly during walking and you've given it some time like that, in other words, you've allowed your glutes to get used to being used properly with walking, then you can consistently offload the cartilage in your knee joint and keep your arthritic knee safe when you go running. So I definitely think it's possible for people with knee arthritis or chondromalacia patella or patellofemoral pain syndrome to get back to running, but they've got to solve the glutes problem. That's a big, big deal. If you don't get your glutes firing correctly, you're going to run back into that kneecap pain. Again, it's just a matter of time before that cartilage can't take it again and it gets flared up. So I hope that helps you out, Johnny G thing. Let me see if I miss anything. Um, does the same exercise as between the tuba? I think you meant the femur and the in the fibula or tibia and the fibula. Mine is under the patella, which hurts at a 45 degree bend. Oh, the reason why it hurts at a 45 degree bend is that that's when there's quite a bit of pressure of the kneecap against the the um, the thigh bone. So that's when it tends to hurt a lot of people. Okay, let me go on to the next question here. Teresa Hobbs, Texas girl listening from South Carolina. Howdy, Teresa. Glad you can join us. Carol Mascal, would ice help with the knee irritation? Uh, Carol Mascal from Trinidad and Tobago. Thanks for joining us, Carol. Um, ice might help. It, it might help to relieve the pain. It's uncertain right now if it, if it really, truly reduces inflammation. But if you feel better, why not? Now, ice is not going to solve your knee arthritis problem. It's not going to heal things faster. Um, but it might take the place of a, of a painkiller or going to the doctor for a knee injection. It might save you a visit to the doctor. So a lot of people do use ice consistently um, if they have a knee flare up. And I, I'm an advocate of it. If you get relief from ice, because not everybody does, but if it works for you, go for it. Use it to your heart's content. Just be careful not to burn yourself. You can get ice burns. So usually 15 to 20 minutes on and then give your skin a break because you can freeze your skin essentially. That's what an ice burn is. Um, but uh, 15 to 20 minutes on, to, you, you need to get your skin to the point where it feels kind of numb. At that point, you can take the ice off, let your skin kind of return back to its normal sensation, which will take minutes. And then you should have a, a temporary uh, relief of pain in your knee. And then you would just do that as needed. Just don't just be careful with your skin. KB good at Steve cause amen. And then we have Teresa Hobbs again, having an issue straightening my leg out the muscle behind the knee is very tight any exercises for that there's a lot of little muscles behind the knee um, typically the calf muscles are, are one of the main ones that gets involved behind the knee um, you, we'd have to look and see what kind of imbalance you have the other muscle that is back there teresa is the the hamstrings are not directly behind your knee they're kind of on the outsides of your knee um, but if you've got those muscles over overacting and you can't straighten your leg out, I'd have to ask the question, is your joint stuck? Like, is your knee joint not moving well? You might need to loosen it up, which there's little exercises that you can do for that. In fact, let me just show you right now. I'm using my laptop. So let's see if I can get the best angle to the side here. Yeah, that works. All right, so Teresa, what you can do to unlock your knee in case this is what's going on is just twist your foot in and out. Sit down with your knee bent just like this and just twist your foot in and out like so. And that should, you do this for like a minute or two, at least. You gotta go for like a minute and you can take little rest breaks because it can get kind of tiring. It's not a normal motion for the knee to do, but just move your foot out and in and go as far as you can. And if you have a true stuck joint, you'll feel a, a resistance. Like you can't bring it in all the way. Like you can try with your other side and, and go in further or out too, you can you can get stuck going out. And if you can't quite go there that way, just do what you can without pain, without making it worse. Give it a couple minutes. And you might need to do this repeatedly for a few days, like every, every hour. This is a really easy one to do. You could sit and watch TV. You can sit at work and do this. And nobody really knows what you're doing besides moving your foot in and out. So it's, it's a real simple thing to do. Um, if that frees up some more knee motion, then that could calm down the muscle. If the muscle is still bothering you, then you got to dig a whole lot. It could be sciatica. It could be a, a muscle imbalance but up in your hip. It could be a muscle imbalance down at your foot, causing the calf to overreact. There's tons of things. Um, so I hope that helps you out, Teresa. 
Kimberly Stewart, I have a lot of heel pain as well as knee pain. Any suggestions to feel less pain? Uh, heel pain where? Is it like on your Achilles tendon or on the bottom of the heel, kind of at the corner? If it's the Achilles tendon, which a lot of people will call that heel, heel pain, it's kind of on the back side of the ankle, that tends to be an overuse of the, of the muscles that come from the Achilles tendon, the gastrocnemius and the soleus. Um, so those muscles, the, the main calf muscles that people think of, tend to be overworked when you have weak toes. When your toes can't bend all the way and you can't sustain your toes closed like that, then that tends to tell me that you've got weak toe flexors, which help out the, the, the rest of the calf muscles, and that can cause that problem. The, what was the other thing you said here? Muscle behind the knees. Oh yeah, so it, it could, the heel pain. So it could also be sciatica, Kimberly. Um, if you've got pain in your hip and your back, you might have sciatic pain. We've got playlists about that um, on our channel. If you just go to the tab that says playlist and look up the one that says sciatica, you might need to look through that one and see if that's true, what's going on. The other thing that could happen behind the knee is a baker cyst, which we've got a playlist on that too. Baker cysts are, are um, uh, there's a, a pooch, pooch isn't the right word. So we say out here in Texas anyway, um, like a bubble that forms on the back of the knee. It looks like swelling oftentimes but it's the knee joint capsule, the actual, the container of the knee, what holds all the fluid inside. It stretches out on the backside because of excessive pressure, which is the same thing that causes the knee arthritis that I talked about. Right, I'm gonna go just a few more and then get you back to the information here. Johnny G thing does, okay, we talked about that on the 45 degree bend. Cindy Davies from Chicago. Hello, Cindy Davies. That's my wife's name, Cindy. I have bone on bone and PT has me doing quad and glute exercises. I, I don't like the quad exercises. I mean, that's what probably got you the bone on bone knee arthritis. Um, you absolutely need to strengthen your glutes. I'm extreme on this. When I talk to other physical therapists about this stuff, Cindy, they, they look at me cockeyed and they think, why wouldn't you strengthen the glutes? That's, that's one of the muscles that attaches to the knee. But their thinking is strengthen every muscle. They're just being exhaustive without thinking why, what set up the muscle imbalance. Um, and you you have to that that's as a clinician, you know, as a healthcare professional who's helping people with these kinds of problems. I think it's my responsibility to think why. And when I explain what I showed you on the skeleton about the way that the muscle, the quad muscles attached to the kneecap. Once I, I have a minute to talk to physical therapists and I can reason with them, then they're like, oh, OK, so I've been doing it wrong all this time. They have that that thought in their head about how they've been treating their patients. So my best advice to you, Cindy, is share this video with them. Hopefully they'll learn a couple things. Maybe they'll disagree. I don't know. Um, share our, our other videos where we talk about it as well. Maybe they'll, they'll learn a few things. Um, but strengthening the quad muscles, I, I would have to ask that physical therapist, did you test the quad muscles? And did you test the glute muscles? Because if you muscle test the quad muscles and they actually were weak, we use a scale of zero to five. It's called muscle grading. You can look this up. And typically quads are four out of five or five out of five on people, even with knee arthritis. Unless they're very flared up, then it just hurts to move. But if you can straighten out your knee, think about this. If you can straighten out your knee and hold up your leg up against gravity, and the therapist can support your leg back here and push down with all their force and all their weight and your knee doesn't buckle, you hold them up like that, then you've got very strong quads. But if you lay on your stomach and do a glute test, and I'll show you what it looks like. This is very hard for most people to do with, with knee arthritis. To do this test, your physical therapist would have you lie on your stomach, bend a knee like this, and then they would have to pick up your, your leg. It won't go very high. And then they'll let it go, and you have to not let it drop right here. You have to keep your leg right there. That means you have strong glutes. But if you, you know, if you fall like that, then you've got weaker glutes. There's other ways to do these muscle tests, but those are the ways that I use and kind of the most common ways. Um, and I, that needs to be done in order to determine which muscles need to be strengthened. And I, I want to spend some time on this because it's a big deal, especially if your physical therapist sees this. I'm going to get on this case. You need to muscle test physical therapists. You have to. You can't just assume that quads are weak whenever you're treating these people with knee arthritis problems. You assume that because once in a while they are, but not always. 
you really only see weak quads right after some knee surgery, like a, a meniscectomy, a, a, a knee meniscus surgery, a, a knee replacement. Obviously, they just cut everything wide open. Um, or some big, severe traumatic knee injury, like somebody who just tore their ACL after a sports injury or a car accident or some other major accident. Yeah, quads are going to be shut down after that. But if it was a chronic problem that developed slowly over time, there wasn't really a, a big, massive injury recently, which is how most people come in with knee arthritis problems to a physical therapy clinic. If they haven't had surgery, you should not be strengthening the quads. There's no reason to do it. Test their quads and make sure that they're not weak. If they're weak, then strengthen them. If they're not weak, don't touch them. Go check other muscles or something else affecting that knee. And that's what needs to be strengthened. Sorry, I'm very passionate about that subject. All right, Cindy, you had one more question. I'm going to talk about the rest of the information here, which is related to it. Do orthotics help? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I found it's very hit and miss. Um, you have to do some troubleshooting. You might have to buy several pairs of orthotics to try out which ones benefit you and which ones don't. Um, my advice with our th orthotics, and we really need to do a video series on this. We'll get to one eventually, is um, if you have flat arches, if you know that you have flat arches, you probably will benefit from an orthotic. Uh, like what she's talking about, the other word is insoles, shoe insoles. And I use some because I have flat arches. And when I'm on my feet all day, like when I'm at work, I need a little extra support to make sure that my arches are supported properly as I'm on my feet because then I get a little bit of foot pain here and there. Um, but I strengthen myself. There's things you can do to strengthen yourself so you don't have to rely on enough um, arch support, especially if you like to wear sandals or flip-flops or something like that. You know, it's not a practical thing to be using all the time. Um, and then the, the next question I always get about um, orthotics or shoe insoles is, should I get the custom ones or should I get the over-the-counter ones? Because you could buy them at you know, any place they sell shoes. Um, and the research that I've seen is that there isn't really a big difference in, as far as improvement in pain relief. Uh, with the custom ones versus the the uh, over-the-counter ones. Now, if you talk to a foot specialist, they might tell you different. Maybe they make them better than the ones that they were using the study. I don't know. I've never bought, just for full disclosure, I've never bought um, uh, custom orthotics before, so I can't say that they work for me. And I've gotten by great with the over-the-counter ones that I've used. Um, and, and I don't really have any problems. And I used to have foot problems, but I, I don't have them anymore. All right, I'm going to pause here. We'll get to all the comments. Um, I do have some time today, so let's get to the next part, I, which I've already been harping on. The second most important exercise you should be doing if you've got knee arthritis problems is glutes exercises for the reasons that I just stated. Quads are rarely ever weak. It happens from time to time. I'm not saying always, but if you're watching this video right now and you've got knee osteoarthritis, straighten out your knee as long as it doesn't hurt. And if you can hold it up for a good five seconds or longer, without your knee starting to bend all of a sudden, you probably have some decent quad strength. And if somebody can push you down and, and your knee doesn't hurt and you're okay, you've got great quad strength. But if you can't hold your leg up like I showed you lying down on my stomach over there, you can't lift it up off the table or, or it starts to make your back hurt or your, your, you get a cramp in your hamstring, that happens often. You have weak glutes and you need to get that stronger ASAP so that your knee gets healthier so that as you go through life, you can function better. We've had so many comments on our channel here of, of on our videos where we tell people to use their, their glutes instead of their quads. We, we have a lot of positive comments, of course, people saying, oh, I feel so much better. I can't believe this worked. This helped my knee problem. But then we get this comment. I can't make my glutes work. It happens all the time. And the reason that happens is because they have not been using their glutes in such a long time, you know, properly that they lost conscious control of them. They can't actually make them work. And then they're so weak on top of that that when they do fire, they're barely detectable and barely even generating a force. Muscles are supposed to generate a force and they just aren't even there. They just they, they, they are so far behind in making their glutes work that they can't even feel it. Imagine that. So the solution there is start where you're at. You got to start where you're from and just start working the glutes. There's a bunch of glute exercises that we posted on this channel. Um, we'll we'll uh, list one in the description here. If you're watching this live, it won't be there yet, but it, on the replay, it'll probably be there by the time you get to this. Um, you need to get to your glutes. They need to turn on. You need to have conscious control. You need to be able to fire them individually. You need to be able to say, okay, right cheek fire, left cheek fire, 
and you need to be able to do it at quick speeds, especially if you're going to be doing faster paced walking or running. That's just a, a solving the glute problem. That's what it is. You need to have awesome glute control and awesome glute strength for you to avoid having knee replacement later on in life. And if you don't get that glute strength and you end up having a knee replacement, or maybe you're watching this right now and you've already had a knee replacement, and now the other knee's talking to you, or your, or your knee that you got replaced is hurting. That happens too. If you've never gone through glute strengthening, you need to do it. If you had a knee replacement, chances are you went to physical therapy and they strengthened the heck out of your quads, which is good after you've had a knee replacement because they just cut everything open and quads will shut down after that. But they kind of end the therapy usually and don't tell you it doesn't work on the glutes because it's not something that they think of. Because most physical therapists are excellent, really, really good at helping people after they've had a knee replacement, after they had some sort of surgery. Not so good at helping people when they don't have a surgery to recover from. So that's why people that have had a knee replacement, they, they get it kind of drilled into their head. Work on your quads, work on your quads, work on your quads. They, they get patted on the back. Hey, you worked on your quads. Good job. You feel those quads on the bike? Excellent job. High five. Your quads burn. Let's do quad sets. That's, what, that's an exercise that's often done. And it's just about burning the quads and making the quads work. Meanwhile, glutes don't get any attention. They don't get any action. And they get weaker and weaker. And your poor knee gets more and more compressed. And the kneecap gets compressed on there too. And your knee doesn't get happy. Your knee replacement that you had gets worn down and then people wonder why they loosen the components loosen later on and you need a second knee replacement or you're having pain when you don't even have a joint in there anymore. So glutes, that's the number two thing that you need to be worried about is making your glutes turn on if, they not, if they're not turning on, getting conscious control over those glutes and then strengthening them. And there's tons of exercises. I recommend starting out with a bridge exercise, but you have to make sure that you're targeting the glutes. And the feedback that you're looking for if you're working on your glutes is making sure that those glute muscles, right there, that that muscle burns. You feel it working when you're trying out that exercise. Any exercise. You could just stand up right now and squeeze your butt muscles. Just, just tighten up. Hold it. Hold it for 10 seconds, 20, 30 seconds. Make them work. If you did that right now, and you didn't feel your glutes working, you felt your hamstrings working or your back muscles, or worse yet, your quads worked, because that happens too. People go tighten up their glutes, they're like, I feel it in my quads. You're so imbalanced, it's not even funny. You can't, you tr your brain has said, I'm going to fire my glutes and the quads fire. Happens all the time here in the clinic, and we're just undoing all these problems that people have developed over the years to depressurize their knee joints. All right, let me go on to the last point here, and then we're going to get to all these comments. It's lighting up over here. I'm going to, I'll get to that in just a minute. Okay, the last one is stretching with muscle activation. If you have knee arthritis and you've got a loss of motion, meaning you can't fully bend your knee or straighten out your knee compared to your other side, your other side moves just fine. You've got a lot of stiffness in your knee. Simply stretching out your knee joint like this, like if you're just bending it is okay. That's that's probably going to help out. But what would help out even more is if you use this muscle, this muscle right here, the hamstring to assist it in bending. So in other words, if you actively try to bend it on your own and then give it some overpressure. So you're firing this muscle right here to actively bend it and then holding it in like this 10, 20, 30 seconds, enough to not cramp. It doesn't have to be super hard. When I have people do this, I tell them on a scale of zero to 10, intensity of muscle contraction one or two is all you need just a light contraction not trying to kill your muscle back there light contraction and then some over pressure right here that is what will help your knee joint move the best because when you fire those muscles it yanks the joint the way that it's supposed to move from the inside so that way you're not just forcing it from the outside giving it pressure here you're moving the joint inappropriately to give you the the mechanics here if you're grabbing your leg out here and pulling it in, think of what's how this is going to move over here. You're actually going to compress it more. But there's a muscle, those hamstring muscles, they come in and attach on the sides of the knee right here. And if you can pull that this way, now you're sliding that joint. I can't do it on the skeleton here. It's it's uh, to use a certain way. But you're creating proper mechanics at the joint. That's how we say it in, in, the, in the physical therapy field. Now, same goes for straightening. If you're trying to straighten out your knee, like this, you can't 
say you're stuck like this and you can't really straighten it out all the way, then when you go to straighten out your leg, you've got to fire this muscle. Whoa, did I just say do a quad exercise? I did, but here's the reason. Here's the reason, okay? The quad is supposed to straighten out the knee. And if your knee doesn't straighten out because you've got some stiffness from arthritis, you got to take the advantage of the muscles that help you get there. And temporarily, once you get once you get full motion, you're done with quad exercises. But if you can use that quad, it's probably strong anyway, to help get you that full range of motion. So what you would do is say, okay, I'm going to fire my quad. You see how my knee wants to already straighten out a bit? Just firing my quad and then try to straighten it out all the way. You're probably going to be bent. And then give yourself some light overpressure. And it doesn't have to be a big contraction here either, just like with the hamstring. Light contraction and then overpressure. The point here is not to strengthen. We're not trying to get the quad stronger. The point is to get more motion in the joint using the muscle connections within the joint. So you would hold that contraction for 20, 30, 40 seconds. I wouldn't go more than a minute. You probably won't last more than a minute anyway. 10 seconds is usually, is usually fine. And repeat it for between those two stretches, five minutes worth of your time, several times a day until you get all the motion that you can out of it. And once you get all the motion you can out of it, you're done doing that. You don't need to fire your quads anymore. Now you should be moving better. So you need to think about doing like the bridges, the glute strengthening. You need to think about being on your feet a bit more, doing that high um, reps, low resistance exercise to make sure that you lubricate the joints. So there's your three-pronged approach towards battling knee arthritis, bone-on-bone -bone knee joint arthritis. You're gonna do a high repetition, low resistance exercise. We talked all about that, rewind, if you wanna go back and get that. And then we talked about getting your glutes to work, not the quads. And then the third one is making sure that you use the muscles to your advantage to get the full range of motion if you've got knee stiffness. So there you go. If that's all you're looking for, you can end the video here. If you want to hear me rant a bit more, depending on everybody's comments, um, you can keep listening. All right. So who's next here? We got, we finished with Cindy Davies and Johnny G thing. It talked about running. Running doesn't hurt or walking just the bend. I've been running for years. Thanks. Okay. We were talking about Johnny G thing's situation earlier. I'm glad that running doesn't hurt. That's a very positive thing. Make sure you use those glutes when you're running though so it doesn't begin to hurt, Johnny G thing. And then you said here in another comment, have you ever heard the study on fasting saying it naturally releases embryonic stem cells and regenerates cartilage? No, I have not heard that one, Johnny G thing. I'll have to look at it. Um, I've heard good things about fasting, but not that it released embryonic stem cells. I wonder how that works. And then uh, you said here, great to listen to someone with great insight and common sense, unlike a lot of so-called professionals who make matters worse. You know what? I, I think as physical therapists, as a medical professional, we're just like everybody else. You, you hear you, everybody's probably had a teacher at some point that, you know, wasn't that great. And then you had a teacher that was awesome. I feel like it's the same thing. There's, you know, great attorneys, bad attorneys, um, you know, great nurses, bad nurses, same with everything. And, and some are maybe not good at certain things. Like I think most physical therapists are great at helping people after surgery. Um, but my specialty, helping people avoid surgery is a whole different ballgame. It's just, but the thing is people will go to physical therapists thinking that they can help them out that way. And physical therapists don't always know how to communicate that they can't help them out properly. So that's, that's the way it goes. Okay, next thing. Roxana Virgi, um, the person that we use for the, for the comment. Great advice from me, Dr. David. So appreciate it. Thank you. Can you tell me if I should continue with Pilates? Great question. Pilates can be great for your core. It is great for your core. Let me, let me say that properly. Um, but if you're using your quads a lot, which I think it might make you depending on how you're doing it. There's, there's a move. I don't know the name. It's been a while since I've done it. I might pull, I have some Pilates friends out there. You guys are going to bash me probably. But there's a move where you're holding your legs out straight like this, and then you're up, and you're, you're doing some motions with your arms. I can't even do it. I'm not used to doing it. And I got strong abs and everything I work on it, but it's the movement that I haven't practiced. Um, when you're holding your legs up out like that, Roxana, you're using your quads likely. And, and um, if you're doing a lot of that, it can flare up your knees. Um, but it's up to you to determine for yourself if it's something that aggravates your knees or not. And what you might do is just balance it out with tons of glute strengthening 
And you, if you really enjoy doing Pilates, you do it for other reasons. Maybe you have back pain and it makes your back feel better. You just like doing it for some reason. Maybe you're an instructor. That could be. Um, I think it, it would be okay for you to do it overall. It's, it's a good thing. But you have to do glute strengthening because you, you just have to. There's Like I said, you have to solve the glute problem. So I hope that helps, Roxana. Jasmine Marcos. Hi, I'm watching from Singapore. Hello in Singapore. Thanks for joining us, Jasmine. Teresa Hobbs, I will try that, but I don't think it is the joint, but the muscle could be sciatica. Thank you. Yeah, I think you probably do have sciatica based on how you're talking about it. I need more information to give you more information. Sab Sabaro Nalin Murphy. Hi from Chandler. Chandler, Arizona. Hey, you're not too far away from us. Okay, we got Jasmine Marcos. MRI, this is going to be good. MRI results a week ago showed that I have a torn meniscus on my left knee. Okay. It happened last December 14th. So I, I think December 14th, 2021. So we're today's Valentine's day. Happy Valentine's day, everybody. So we're exactly two months out of that. Doctor recommends to shave it. No pain, no pain. Whoa. Okay. So you don't have pain, but they want to do surgery except, but sometimes my knee locks. Should I go for surgery? Okay. This is a great one. I knew it was coming. So Jasmine, if your knee locks, that's a sign that you have a torn meniscus, definitely. And you had an MRI result that, that proved it. So you, you're kind of in a bit of a dilemma. The fact that you don't have pain, though, I think tips the scale towards not having surgery. Ultimately, it's your decision. You live with your own knee. You live with your meniscus. I, If I were you, if you're a patient here in the clinic, I would have a long talk with you about how strong your glutes are, how strong your glutes can become, how likely it is that you can work them out because if you can depressurize that joint, like I said, you might depressurize the meniscus too and the locking might reduce and reduce and be very manageable for you. Maybe if it locks once or twice a year, is that worth having a surgery? Because if they shave off that meniscus, you've just lost an important chunk of cartilage that might actually be helping you and you don't want to cut that off. Now, if your knee joint is locking consistently, like several times a day, it freaks you out. You can't walk for a moment. I see patients, I've seen patients like that and it just isn't getting better despite you doing the right things like glute strengthening for one thing. Um, then I might consider having the operation done. That, that's how I would play that card. That's, that's, a, that's a tough one to be in, but you're going to have to self-evaluate and see what the potential for glute strengthening is. And then also seeing a physical therapist, a manual physical therapist, ideally that can free up the motion because it could be an alignment issue in your knee. It could be the, the joints restricted and just not moving well. And that could allow the joint to lock less just instantaneously with a few visits working with the with the joint. So um, I hope that helps, Jasmine. Uh, Johnny G thing. What are the top three exercises for gluteus? One, sumo squats, question mark, like you shown last week. I got, can you show another two? Oh, gosh, you know, I don't have time today. I, I'm already at 42 minutes here. Um, but we've got a video with the top five glute exercises for knee pain. And there none of them... One of them I think is standing, but there a lot of them are on the table. So you can lie down on your back. You can get on all fours. There's different ways to do it. Um, bridges, I think, are a great place to start. If you're if you're advanced for bridges, like they're they're too easy for you, um, then you can go for uh, the standing squats. Um, and then once you do squats, doing like I, concentric, eccentric. So in other words, reps where you're going up and down. I always teach people the holds. I don't talk about this much. I teach people to hold a, a glute contraction because it wakes up the muscle, because I'm assuming that they don't have woken up glute muscles. And when you hold it, it makes the muscle work better. And then after you've done that for some time, and you can confident, re confidently rely on all the muscle fibers firing, and you can recruit the muscle very well, then we can go to reps where you can start doing like weighted squats or, or body weight squats for reps. And, and that's where you would go next with that. I hope that helps Johnny G thing. Okay, and Anna Purni, PB. Doctor, I have 56 years and 80 kilograms in MRI. I have OA. I'm so sorry. I don't know what the conversion is. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that real quick. 80 because the weight might matter. It's 2.2 pounds. 176 pounds. Okay. Sorry. I think in terms of pounds. Okay. So you're 176 pounds. 56 year old. I have OA third stage in the left and a complete meniscus tear in fourth stage in right knee and doctors suggest surgery, any exercise and brace I should use. 
Okay, so it depends on how tall you are now, because if you're 170, 180 pounds, 80 kilograms, and you're six feet tall, then you're you're a thin person. If you're five feet tall, though, you're not a thin person. Um, we might need to address the weight first. Now, your age is young for having um, you know that that much arthritis and a, and a, a meniscus tear could happen early on. Um, but it, it's kind of like what I was saying with Jasmine. It, it really depends on the potential for your glute strength. You know, as long as the weight isn't excessive um, and it, the glutes are where you, So to answer your question, any exercise, glutes, you need to work your glutes, Anna. Anna Porni, you need to work your glutes a lot. You need to get stronger. If you increase your glute strength, you should theoretically see a decrease in your knee pain and a potential chance for you to get rid of the, the chance of having surgery, you know, avoid having a surgery. Um, as far as a knee brace, if you don't have any ligament tears, or ligament problems, you technically don't need a knee brace. You might just put on a knee sleeve, like one without brackets or any hard, stiff struts on the sides, just for pain relief for, for your own self. Um, but you technically shouldn't need a knee brace, um, like required to heal. You shouldn't need one for a meniscus or knee arthritis. But um, you need to work on your glutes for sure. Keith Wainwright, what about naproxen? I have the prescription from the VA recommended. Naproxen is an anti-inflammatory, a lot like um, uh, ibuprofen. So it's it's a temporary pain relief and anti-inflammatory drug. Um, it is not going to solve your knee arthritis problem. You need to work on taking the pressure off the knee joint, which is done by fixing the muscle imbalance, um, exercising correctly, allowing nourishment to the joints. And naproxen is just a Band-Aid solution. Now, it might help you sleep better at night. If you're having trouble with your knee at night, you might feel a little better moving in the morning if you're very stiff in the morning but it is not going to heal the problem for the long term, which we hear a lot about from the VA is they're just into short-term solutions. Um, we see a lot of the patients actually who are looking for the long-term solution because they don't want to be on pain medications all day or all the time. That's what they kind of just go back to the VA for is to get a refill on their pain medication or to get a referral to pain management. Um, and so they, they come to us looking for uh, a long-term solution, which we're talking exercising at that point, getting treatment here in the clinic. Steve Cos says, thank you, Keith Wainwright. Synvisc injections, yay or nay? Um, also temporary relief, Keith, um, they might have offered that to you at the VA too. Um, Synvisc injections, for those of you that don't know, is a, um, a, a gel. It's supposed to mimic the same fluid that's inside the knee joint, the, the, the joint fluid. It's called synovial fluid. Um, and it's an artificially developed um, fluid that they inject into the knee. And the way the doctors usually say it is, is we're going to add cushion to your knee by injecting this, this gel in there. And um, it's, it's um, helpful in some situations we've seen. Uh, but again, it's not a long-term solution because if you still have those muscle imbalances, it's just a matter of time before you recompress your joint and you're back in the same situation that you were before you had the Synvisc injection. So yay, if you want temporary relief. Nay, if you can stand without it and you're looking for a long-term solution, do something else. What I tell people all the time when they're looking at doing something like that here in the clinic is if it's not going to hurt you, go for it. If you're looking for some pain relief and you want a synvisc injection or a cortisone injection or to take the OxyContin or whatever it is you want to take for pain relief, if you want to use ultrasound, which we know isn't proven, if you want to use an e-brace, cool. But you better be working on the long-term solution because all that stuff's short-term. You better be fixing your glute strength. You better be not working on your quads actively unless you have a knee joint restriction. You can't fully straighten out your knee, and that's just temporary. Um, but you, you need to be working the long-term solution. You cannot get this injection and say, oh, that's going to heal my, my knee arthritis. After I have this injection, I should be golden. Mm -mm. Same with stem cells. If you get stem cells, yeah, you might get new cartilage laid down. But then you're going to recompress it because you didn't fix the muscle imbalance. And you're going to be back in the same place that you were. And they recommend getting the, the stem cell injections done again, you know, in six months or whatever frequency they're recommending these days. Okay. Johnny G. Thing, look up Tyler Tolman on Google, fasting car cartilage. There's a video on it. Okay. Thanks for, for letting me know. Um, he was talking about uh, how fasting might release stem cells. Balantra that everything is waste only rest 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 is safe oh well, you can rest and do the right things like we talked about here um do the the legs the knee swings use the the low resistance high repetition there's a lot of value in that stuff and then starting to work on your glutes but i do have to tell you 
because a lot of people are looking for quick relief because they hurt right now. The stuff that I'm telling you to do is not a quick solution. That's why I said I don't have a problem with you going to go get a Synvisc injection, a cortisone injection, taking ibuprofen, meloxicam, naproxen, whatever you want to, you know, anti-inflammatory medications. That will give you relief right now, today, hopefully. Some people don't react to it as, as, as good as others. Um, but the solutions I provide to you are not short-term. They're long-term solutions. Now, there are some natural things that you can do that that kind of provide some short-term solutions, but they're they're not, you know, scientifically fabricated medications that affect pain receptors in our nerves, like you can take orally or get injected into your into your joint. That's gonna instantaneously take away the pain, but you can't be doing that all the time. That's just a temporary thing. So yeah, rest is gonna help you out, but you gotta fix that long-term problem. Johnny G thing, what about the crunching sound when you're when you bend your knee? Is it a good idea to get it cleaned out via serray as it seems like it may act as a sandpaper and not helping the inside of the knee? Well, if the crunching sound is so Johnny G thing's talking about noise coming from the knee, it might not hurt. If it doesn't hurt, why touch it? If it if it hurts and it when it crunches, it might just be irritated and you need to take some time off, work on the, the tailgate swings, the, the low resistance high repetition exercising, you might be okay. Um, so you might not need surgery to have it cleaned out or sandpapered down um, so that your knee doesn't make any more noise. The noise isn't a, a bad thing unless it's painful. Um, Wilcox Ritter, VUM today. Jasmine Marcos, thank you, doctor. I appreciate your advice. I will start strengthening my glutes now. Awesome, Jasmine. Great, great uh, job. Barb H, could turning my knees out while walking be irritating my knees even though my glutes are contracted simultaneously. We've talked about this, Barb. If you're firing your, your glutes, good. But if your glutes fire when your quads fire, not good. You need to separate the two. So you might be telling yourself, okay, glutes are working. You might say, all right, I'm walking. I'm turning my legs out. Butt muscles are firing back here. And I'm trying to walk like this. But then these muscles are all tight too. Well, guess what? That connects to the knee joints. And that's going to compress. So what you need to master, Barb, is gently firing these muscles, gently making them work without making this work. That often happens where people try to maximally fire their glutes and then the quads fire and everything fires and now you're compressing the knee joint and it's hurting you to walk even though you're firing your glutes as you're walking. So you need to tone down how hard you're firing your glutes so that you don't also contract your quads and, and, and increase the pressure inside your, your knee joints. So just be careful with that. Keith Wainwright, I have had the Synvisc injections. I have lifted weights for over 30 years. Awesome. So you must be doing something right. Lakey Huxorley, greetings from Bloomington, Minnesota. Wow, you're on the other border. We're on the southern border of the U.S. I can literally see Mexico across uh, our building, uh, maybe like a mile away. Or less. Um, so Lexi Lakey says, um, discovered your website earlier this month. Thanks for all the great info. Wondering what you think about knee pillows for sleeping, helpful or harmful? Great question, Lakey. Um, it depends on how you get comfortable sleeping at night. A lot of people have pain in their knees at night and then they wake up with pain in the morning. Usually what will improve the pain the most is fixing the pain during the day. So depressurizing the knee joints, making sure that there's less irritation throughout the day, then it turns into less irritation at night. Um, but generally the, the knee pillows that she's talking about are, are ones where you, I don't have a knee pillow here, but well, this one might work. Hold on, moments. Something like this, where you put it behind your knees when you sleep, or you can just get a normal pillow and shove it back there too, fold it over maybe, and that works for a lot of people. I love this. I sleep like this. I use a, a normal pillow that you put under your head down there, and this works for me. And then when you lie on your side, you might use that same pillow like this, and that tends to work for people as well because the softness might, might cushion the knee joints. If the knee joints are kind of tender and you lie down like this, that, that could irritate it a bit. So I, I think this is great. Any kind of pillow like this or or just a normal pillow that you use under your head would work as well. So great question. All right, we got time for just a couple more things here. I'm gonna cut us off at an hour. I cannot go past that that long. 
Is the exercise, oh, this is Senate Shimelis. Is the exercise can avoid the surgery? I am bone on bone on right knee and I have pain every day. I am very closer to do the replacement. Is there any miracle? It depends on, on um, your ability to, to work on your glutes, really. it's uh, That's where I would start with you. So we'd have to get you off your feet, make sure that you flare down first off, and then we'd have to see if you can um, get the glutes stronger. If you got any activation in your glutes, um, then we got something to work with and, and there's potential. But I mean, you might be at a point where you're done. You're done trying. We get people like that all the time that, that I see they have potential, but when they think about their own lifestyle, their future, their overall health currently with the surgeons telling them, of course, they go get the surgery and they're happy. You know what? If you have to have a knee replacement, it's one of the best replacements to have. It is major surgery. Yes, there's risk for infection. There's risk for them doing it wrong or some complication to the surgery afterwards. Um, but if you have to have it done, it might be worth it to you to go for it. Um, then it's it's one of the better surgeries to have for sure. Keith Wainwright, can cartilage be regenerated? What about collagen peptides? I do squats using TRX exercise strap unit. Um, can cartilage be regenerated? That's being researched right now uh, by scientists. And uh, with certainty, we don't know. What I talk about all the time that I have seen uh, just clinically, so I would be considered a guru, not really like a scientific expert. Um, I think that it can heal, which is different from regenerating. It can You can put down scar tissue, which is 70 to 80% stronger than the normal cartilage tissue, and which is pretty good. And, and you can get back to being very active. But as far as laying down brand new cartilage cells where you don't have any anymore, you have damaged ones, not a, a certain thing that can happen at this point. All right, we got one more we can do here. And a pony again. Um, thanks, Dr. Climbing Stairs is very difficult for me. Any suggestions, any injection? or medicines is there for reducing pain and in fourth stage? Can you suggest any solution if I send my MRI how, how and how? We we can't really treat you. If you set, if you start sending us your MRI, your x-rays, all that, it, it would be treatment where we can't treat you out of state. Uh, uh, license restrictions, uh, don't let us do that. Um, but I can advise you like this, like we're doing right now. Um, and so, uh, Climbing stairs, it comes back to the glutes. If your glutes are not controlling going up the stairs and coming down the stairs, you're going to use your quads and it's just going to over compress your knee joints. And so you've got to you've got to learn how to use stairs better. You, we have a video on this. We'll have to link it up on there. And um, uh, the way that you climb stairs has to be glute driven. You have to use your glutes. Otherwise, um, you're going to just over compress the, the, the knees. You're going to use your quads. Your kneecaps are going to press against your thigh bones. Your thigh bones are going to press against your shin bones. All the joints are going to be compressed and it's just going to hurt. The, based on this, you're just over um, uh, imbalanced tremendously and you need glute strength. So you got to go back to glute strength and try to avoid the stairs if you can. If you just can't, you have to go down very, very carefully. One thing that I get commented on here and there on, on our video about going up and down stairs for uh, knee pain is going up and down stairs backwards. This is a great point to end on. If you go up and down stairs backwards, it is a great short term solution because it, it tends to feel better on people's knees. So if, if you need help and a poor knee, go down the stairs and up, up the stairs backwards, you might feel better. But in the long term, you're using your quads to do that. You typically don't use your glutes unless you can figure out a way to use your glutes going up and down backwards. But it tends to make things um, worse in the long run because you're strengthening your quads. So in the short term, it might be okay, but you better be working on strengthening your glutes outside of using the stairs so that you can eventually get back to the stairs and use them normally without making your knees worse. All right, guys, I got to cut it here. There's a few more comments. I'm so sorry we didn't get to it. Hopefully we can get to, to these questions soon. Um, thanks so much for everybody who joined us live. Uh, don't forget to check out the links in the description <clears throat> to get exercises and stuff like that. And then um, check us out um, on Mondays. I can't come into a time just yet. Um, usually we're doing it around this time, like the time that we started today, but schedules just fluctuate right now. So we'll have to, um, we'll let you know on social media, on Facebook, and then here on YouTube, if you, if you pay attention to our community tab. We'll usually post right before we come on or, or we'll post when we're going to come on so we, you guys can can uh, watch out. 
But um, anyways, I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.